Kovach, the Associate Program Director for the Blue Ridge Music Center. I'd like to welcome you to the discussion series of Place in the Band, Women in Bluegrass in American Roots Music. This series is part of a project by the Blue Ridge Music Center that began in 2020 to honor the 100th anniversary of women being granted the right to vote. A Place in the Band celebrates the triumphs and explores the struggles faced by women in bluegrass and American roots music. In this discussion series, North Carolina singer, songwriter, and social activist, Laura Lynn Dossett, speaks with women in the music business, including musicians and others involved in music management and promotion roles. Through these conversations, the women share their stories, talking about their role models, mentors, and inspirations, experiences with people they've worked with, issues they've encountered that are specific to women in the industry, changes they've seen over the years, and other parts of their own personal journeys that have helped them to be who they are today. These individual stories show us the collective strength and future possibilities for women in bluegrass and American roots music. I hope you enjoy the series and thank you for joining us. Hello and welcome to the first of these series of discussions with and about women in bluegrass and American roots music. Today we'll be talking to Rhiannon Gittens. Rhiannon's a banjo player, she's a singer songwriter, she's a composer, she's a band leader, she's a Grammy winner, she's a MacArthur genius, she's a mom. She's also an old friend of mine. Rhiannon and I lived in Greensboro, North Carolina for a long time and we're friends and neighbors and work together there. So while it was great to have this discussion with her today about all these important issues, it was also just fun to catch up with an old friend. My name is Laura Lynn Dossett. And here's Rhiannon Giddens. I was thinking about in the, in the ways that you bring folk music or bring um, the banjo and, you know, some of the ballad tradition and things like that into other, other areas. And two particular projects I was thinking about were the Native Daughters Project Mm -hmm. and the um, New Basement Tapes project, mm -hmm. which were very, two different, very, very, two different. very different projects. <laughs> so just so our listeners know, um, the New Basement Tapes were, um, it was a T-Bone Burnett project. It was Bob Dylan lyrics, correct? And yeah, they'd been, they had been in a box in a, they were unfinished songs that had been in a box in the attic for 50 years. Got it. And who were the gentlemen on that project with you? <laughs> um, it was Marcus Mumford from Mum Mumford and Sons at kind of the height of their yeah. stardom. I mean, they faded a lot now because of, um, I mean, they're still quite, quite well known, but at that point they were like, they were huge. Yeah. They were huge. Like there was paparazzi, you know, it wasn't a yeah. lot, but there was still paparazzi when we traveled. I was like, this is weird. Yeah. Um, it was Elvis Costello. There was Taylor Goldsmith from Dawes and there was um, Jim James from My Morning Jacket. So, uh, so a bunch of dudes. Bunch of dudes. And yeah. none of them played the banjo. No. No. And none of them were brown. No. No, no it was interesting. <laughs> he, he, you know, T-Bone did kind of one of his, you know, he, he has these really interesting ideas. And so he brought these guys together and he had, we had, he had just, you know, we had had these interactions with the show that he put together the the, the, the fall before and, and then my solo record. And he was like, you should, you should do this basement tapes thing, you know? And I was like, huh? Okay. You know, I didn't, I mean, I don't know Bob Dylan stuff. Like I know the famous songs, but I've never listened to Bob Dylan. You know, I listened to the stuff. We're going to edit that Dylan. out. We won't let anybody know. No, I was very <laughs> upset with him. I said, I don't, you know, but I was like, I'll come in as the, not skeptic, but as the person who's not like, oh, you know, it's an important, I think it's an important perspective. You know, I have, it's not that I don't have respect for Bob Dylan. It's just, I didn't choose to listen to that canon. You know, I just, there's so much other stuff to listen to. And I was like, well, everybody knows that stuff. I mean, I didn't, I just, it was never put in my, put in front of me, you know? It's not to say that I don't respect the hell out of his songwriting. But anyway, so I, I came into it as the only woman, the only person of color. I was the only person of color I saw for two weeks who wasn't cleaning something, mm. you know? It was a little intense, <laughs> you know? Um, and I just weaned my son um, from nursing. And so that was really weird. It was the first time without a baby attached to me in a long, you know, in a long time. And, um, 
Yeah, I was just going through a lot. So it was an intense period. And then I was the only folk musician there, really. You know, like the only one with a modal <laughs> instrument that I had to, you know, what key is this in? I don't know if I can even play this on the banjo, you know? So it was, I, you know, I was full of self-doubts and, and kind of like I hadn't been solo for, for no time, practically, right. you know? And so you, I was uh, really... How would you compare that with uh, the native... Daughters I mean, it's like, it's almost like Native Daughters is a direct response to Basement Tapes, but like <laughs> five years later, it's just, I mean, don't get me wrong, Basement Tapes was an amazing experience, and I had a ball in some ways. I was very distraught in others, but at the end of the day, the net result was a positive experience because I learned a lot about myself, and all of those, you know, there is structural misogyny that's just baked into the music industry. Mm -hmm. I don't think any of those dudes were particularly misogynistic, but like I felt, I just felt the breathing of the patriarchy like the whole two weeks. It was just really, it was really intense. And so I had to figure out myself, like how do I deal with this in a way that is healthy and not, you know, not seeing, not seeing something in every comment but also being aware that it's just in the air sometimes. And you, you couldn't say, it, you couldn't point, pinpoint any one thing. Right. You know what I mean? So it was an in, really interesting sort of, you know, I, I had been surrounded by my people since I started. Chocolate Drops, you know, we, we had formed kind of as a, a bulwark against being the raisin in the oatmeal. You know, it's like, oh, when we have, when we're together, we, we form a front, you know? And then that was the first time I was on my own, like in a group like that. I mean, it was really intense. Yeah. Um, and so I'm grateful for it. I don't know how many, I would have, how many times I would have wanted to do it again, <laughs> but it was a great experience. So then, you know, to do Our Native Daughters was almost, I mean, there was a lot of things that are similar in that, you know, the basement tapes was a very collaborative process and everybody was, you know, um, as much as you can as a, as a musician, be very open to everything. I mean, you know, there's a lot of really great things about that process, but the thing about Native Daughters was, you know, we had all of that and then we had this cultural understanding that was immediate, you know? It was just like, even the fact that I had been surrounded by folks you know, they're for the most part still men, you know, except for, I mean, I worked with Layla some, but, you know, be, to be surrounded by women, nothing but women, nothing but women of color. Um, it, yeah, it was just really, I don't know, it was really intense. It was beautiful. It was, I don't think any of us really knew how much we needed it, you know, it's because we're each of us, like, because we're all in the roots industry, we're all raisins in the oatmeal. We're all sort of kind of holding it, going it alone, you know, surrounded by um, people who don't look like us. And that's fine. And we kind of push through and it's great. But then we kind of all got together and went, oh, God, I don't have to explain this to you. <laughs> I, you know, right. I can just, you know, and it's not to say that we don't ever want to work with other people. It's just like all of these experiences are important. You know, the experience of being on your own and figuring out how to get along. I mean, I see the majority of white people just don't get it because they don't understand what it is to be a minority. You know, they don't understand what it is to go through the day and constantly see people who don't look anything like you. Now, it's just not to say that all white people are the same. They're not, you know, no group is a monolith, but the experience of constantly adjusting for the majority it is not one that you can know unless you've experienced it, you know? So when you're in a space where everybody's had to do that and you don't have to do it anymore, it's, I think, important to do. And so it was a really, really great project for all of us. We want to do another one for sure. We, we kind of, it was not my intention to form a band, but we did and, mm -hmm. you know, performed and we're like, oh my gosh, like this is, you know, a thing. And, um, you know, we just had a call the other day and we're all like <laughs> talking about, you know, everything and you know, anything and everything but nice. um yeah you know i mean and it's it's a combination then of the sisterhood and the you know all the cultural uh like you said that you speak in the same language on a variety of levels yeah yeah, yeah. of course the banjo's there 
we all play different banjos. I, I had my banjo. It was important, <laughs> I think, for me to have my banjo, you know, the basement tapes. It's like, you know, especially because Bob Dylan listened to a lot of Black Roots music, you yeah. know? And his music is informed by that. So I, I was just like, I'm going to represent that in sure. my own way, <laughs> you know, and bring yeah. in some, you know, funk into yeah. this. And it worked, you know, it, it did work. work. I mean, T-Bone knows what the hell he's doing, you know, um, a lot of the time.